There are so many ways to save water around the home, and there's no better place to start than in the garden. And for some tips, I'm answering some questions sent in from Water Corporation Home Smart Program participants. Amanda from Bridgetown is interested in grey water and wants to know how it can be safely used on her garden. Well Amanda, grey water is household wastewater such as bath, shower, laundry and hand basin water that hasn't come into contact with either toilet or kitchen waste. Now it's a great resource and we all produce around about 100 litres per person per day which can be used to sustain the garden if done safely and carefully. For example, in my garden, most of the backyard is irrigated with grey water and it's thriving and makes a huge difference to my water use. Now there are a range of systems on the market. My system sits neatly underneath my potting bench and it costs around two and a half thousand dollars for the supply and installation, including the drip irrigation system out in the garden. And it's what's known as a direct diversion unit. That means there's no storage. As soon as the grey water is generated from the house, it's pumped out straight away to my thirsty plants. It's important to note that there are rules and regulations around grey water reuse management. And these are set by the Department of Health, but administered by your local council. So to find out more information about this, as well as the broad range of systems that are available on the market, as well as those curly questions about soil health and detergent choice, visit the Grey Water Industry Group website. Noel from Bridgetown is concerned that he's overwatering his garden because all of the plants are on the same irrigation cycle, particularly his lawn and his beloved roses. Now ideally, in a water-wise garden, we hydrozone our plants, that is, group them together based on their similar water needs so they can get just the right amount of water without over or under watering. Now in Noel's situation, he's worried that he's over watering his lawn to pander to the roses. Well in fact what I would do is disconnect the sprinklers from the rose bed, keep watering the lawn as you need to, but then just hand water the roses and you might be surprised just how hardy they are. I'd start with one good deep hand watering per week and then a second day if they're still looking thirsty and see how you go. Nola from Dalyalup is gardening on a sand dune and is apparently sick and tired of grevilleas and wants to know what other natives are suitable. Well, don't panic, you have so many wonderful choices. Here in my dryland garden on the sand dune of Fremantle, I'm growing Eremophilas, Ficinia, the Scavola is a whole range of wonderful native coastal species. And you can find out lots more by visiting the Water Corporation website and checking out the WaterWise Plants database. There's photos, cultural notes, and lots of inspiration. Different types of soil hold different amounts of moisture. And Naomi from Bridgetown is convinced that you need to water longer in heavy clay soils. Well, in a way she's right, in that clay soils take more water to fill to a certain depth than sandy soil does because it holds more water per volume. But it also means you can then take longer in between waterings because the water's held there in the root zone. The best way to avoid overwatering in any soil type is firstly to stick to your rostered watering days and then actually look at winding your irrigation run times back in two minute increments to a point where your garden's still doing well without stressing. Marilyn from Dal Yellow has a small 1600 litre rainwater tank and wants to know the best way to get value from it. Well, you'll need at least 60 square metres of catchment draining into it, as well as a pump, and connect that to your toilets and washing machine. And even from a small tank like that, with our late autumn, winter and spring rainfall, in a typical family of four, you'll save between 20 and 30,000 litres of water from that arrangement. It's also a good idea to put in what's known as a mains water backup valve. And this means that when the tank's empty or the power cuts out, mains water kicks in automatically. Now all of this is quite a simple retrofit and this work can easily be done by any licensed plumber. Beverly from Two Rocks wants to know the most cost effective way to save water. Well Beverly, let's start with the biggest water user in our households, the garden. Quite simply, if we can cut right back on irrigation, we'll save the most amount of water. And we can do that by clever hydrozoning, that is grouping plants together based on their water needs and having the high water use areas the smallest. 
and put most of the garden to hardy plants that need minimal, if not no irrigation at all. Now things like grey water systems and rainwater tanks can be expensive, so consider those as longer term investments. And remember in the short term, there's lots of free things you can do, such as having shorter showers or getting the kids to turn off the taps. And all of these things do add up. For more water saving ideas, visit the Water Corporation website or contact your local WaterWise specialist. On a bar stool at the end of the line, she sat, just about tripped over. When she looked up, I thought I was never going home again. Thought I was just a lonely man riding on the